What's up guys, the January Patreon rewards are now available. Mana Drain, Edgar Markov, and Korvold Fae Cursed King are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves or clicking the link in the description. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the crack -a pack series, the first one of the year 2020. I hope everybody had a fantastic new year, a fantastic holiday break. Uh, if you're in school, enjoyed the time off a little bit. If you're at work, hopefully you got a few days off as well, maybe took some vacation time. I had a fantastic new year. I've been a little off and on sick, as I think a lot of people have been, which is not very fun, but got to see a lot of family, got to see a lot of friends. Uh, as some of you may have known, I got engaged. Uh, over this break as well on Christmas morning, I, I asked my current girlfriend and she said yes. So I'm very excited. It was a fantastic break. Uh, we've got a lot of cool new stuff coming down the pipeline for It Resolves. I hope you guys are excited uh, as we are. Um, first and foremost, you probably saw our Patreon ad uh, for, for the month of January. What I did not include in that ad uh, is a very quick note that we redid our $10 tier. Uh, we've had a lot of people asking us, hey, how can we get past uh, proxy rewards, things like that, things that we'd like to get but didn't have, know you existed or something like that. Uh, we certainly appreciate the interest and we wanted to make sure we could get those out to everybody. So the way we are handling that is we have a $10 tier now. Uh, we are adding a mystery proxy as the default giveaway for that tier. So that could be anything from dual lands. That could be uh, new set releases where we've got new cards like Ashiok Nightmare Muse might be a good one or something like that. Uh, and so we've got those as like the default giveaway no matter who. If, if anybody goes to that $10 tier, you will get that. Or you can ask us just via direct message uh, or email or whatever. Uh, for uh, a past proxy, so one that we've already put out, uh, one that we might have a little bit of backstock of, uh, just go ahead and say on the front, that is while supplies last, we are not going to reorder any of these proxies, but assuming we have them, we were, were very, very happy first come first serve basis to get those out to you. So just a quick note there, uh, I don't want to harp on it too long, this is not the video for that, but I uh, just want to let you guys know. Uh, we've also hopefully got more gameplay coming down the pipeline, more of everything. We're really, really excited about it. Uh, of course, we'll have a giveaway for the new Theros set coming up soon as well. All that stuff is to come, and we are very, very excited. But for now, we are going to be opening up a pack of Shards of Alara. This is a really cool set for the It Resolves channel for multiple reasons. One, it's just a really cool set. Uh, but two, uh, this is the set that you all voted on uh, that we were able to open up a full box of, uh, which is something I never thought we would be able to do. So it was really, really exciting for us. Uh, we were very, very happy to be opening that up. Uh, it was a really cool opening. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And hopefully we'll get to do some more of those in the future. But for now, we are going to go through this as if we are drafting. I did not draft during this time. I'm going to do the best I can. Uh, I know the three color theme is very, very big in this, so we'll, we'll see what we get. But our first card here is Call to Heal. It is one and a blue for an instant. Return target creature to its owner's hand, and its controller draws a card. Uh, I don't super love this. Normally, I like bounce effects, especially instant speed, two mana. That's pretty good. The fact that they draw a card is bad. Uh, that just puts them at card advantage, and that's definitely not good. That's not something I'm interested in doing. This sounds like something that would be really good to play on like the last turn of the game where you can bounce a creature win. But other than that, you're giving them an extra card. Uh, it doesn't sound great unless you're in a winning po uh, position already. So not super in for this. Uh, Yoked Plow Beast uh, is five and two white for a five five uh, vanilla creature except for cycling. So you can cycle it by paying two uh, if you do, you discard this card and then you draw a card. So uh, cycling is a really cool mechanic uh, for a lot of reasons. It just gives a little bit of extra utility to every single card that has it. And I love that. Uh, what's really nice is that, you know, on the early turns of the game, say you miss a land drop on turn two or turn three. Well, maybe you can cycle this. Hopefully you get to that land drop. So there's a lot of really nice utility. Maybe you're digging for a removal spell, digging for whatever. This gives you that option. On top of that, it is just a beater. It's a 5-5 five, five for 7, which is bad. Uh, very, very bad, if I'm honest. But it can play that role if it needs to. So it can be an early game cycler, or it can be a late game kind of bomb. So 
I'm okay with this card. I don't love it. I think this is a very bad card in general, but it's definitely, I think, better than Call to Heal. <clears throat> uh, Dreadscape Zombie is a 2-1 for one and a black, and it features the mechanic Unearth, which is a really, really cool mechanic. Oops, sorry if that's uh, not focusing well. Uh, unearth, uh, pay one black, return this card from your graveyard to play. It gains haste, remove it from the game at the end of the turn, or if it would leave play. Unearth only as a sorcery, so you can only do this during your main phase, just a heads up there. Uh, this is like an okay two drop. It gives you a little bit of extra utility. Honestly, I kind of like it better than the rest of the pack so far. Uh, this is not an amazing card by any means. It's certainly not something I hope to take, but it does give you a two one body for two. Not amazing, but it's decent. And then you can get that secondary utility out of it by bringing it back from the graveyard for a turn just for a big attack or, you know, something like that. So there's utility here. I like this better than the other cards for sure. So I think I'm going to take it here. So far, I should say. Uh, let's see. Wave Skimmer Aven uh, is a 2-4 for 2, a green, a white, and a blue. That is the Bant color scheme. Uh, it does have flying, and it has exalted. So whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets plus 1, plus 1 until the end of the turn. <clears throat> Uh, the most notable card that we see with Exalted and like Constructed uh, is Noble Hierarch, which is, incidentally enough, also in the Bant Colors. Uh, a very strong card for sure, and Exalted is a very strong mechanic because it rewards you uh, for only really needing one really aggressive creature. Uh, what that means is a lot of your other creatures can sit back, stay, as, stay up as blockers, while one gets in there for a lot of damage, especially if you've got a lot of Exalted triggers on the field. Uh, these do stack, which is really cool. Uh, this card, very difficult to play. Uh, granted, this is a three color set, so there are going to be pieces of fixing in this set for it. Uh, and I do think that that kind of rationalizes this as the best card we have so far. Uh, two, four flyer for, uh, five, a little expensive, but with exalted, I do think it kind of makes it worth it, assuming you can play it. So I am going to take it here, uh, so far, but I don't necessarily know that this is what we're going to end up with. Uh, Guardians of Akraza, I hope I'm saying that correctly, is a 0-4 for two and a white. It does have Defender, so it cannot attack, uh, but it does have Exalted as well. So this is one of those blockers that just sits up, sits on the field, hopefully being able to block a lot of things on the ground, and then also buffs up your attacker, whatever attacker that might be. Uh, I don't love this as much as the Wave Skimmer because it can't attack. Walls like this tend to just drag out the game a little bit. However, that Exalted does encourage you to have that one creature that's going to be in for a lot, of a, a lot of damage. So I do like it in that deck, but I think I'd rather have the Aven. I think that's a more powerful threat for sure. Uh, Relic of Progenitus, fantastic card, an artifact for one of any color. Uh, you can tap it and it re removes a card in uh, target player's graveyard from the game. That can be yours or your opponent's. Uh, then uh, you can pay one and remove it from the game. Uh, remove all graveyards from the game and draw a card. So uh, not a super util utilitarian card in uh, limited necessarily, but it is really, really good and constructed. Definitely wouldn't take it here, but at worst, it does provide just a cycling mechanic. Uh, you can use this, draw a card, remove some cards from the graveyard, may or may not be super helpful, but it does draw you a card in any color. So there is utility for a card like this, and it does leave you open, but I think I'd much rather have the Aven here. It's just a bigger threat. Definitely want to go with that. Uh, Hindering Light is a white and a blue for an instant. Counter target spell that targets you or a permanent you control, and then you draw a card. Uh, definitely a decent card in the fact that it replaces itself and it deals with something on the opponent's side, whether that's, uh, you know, a counter spell of their own, I guess, or a, uh, a removal spell or a burn spell, anything like that this deals with. That isn't going to cover everything. There are a lot of things this does not hit, which is worth noting. Uh, and the fact that it doesn't hit creatures, I think, is really, really important. Uh, I, if this did hit creatures, I would be so much more likely to take it because creatures are really the big thing you're going to run into in Limited. Unfortunately, because it doesn't, I don't think it's as good. Uh, the drawing a card is very nice, I will say, but you really have to side this in against uh, a deck that you know has a lot of targeted uh, spells of some kind. Uh, Vithian Stinger 
Uh, it's a zero one for two and a red. You can tap it and it deals one damage to target creature or player. And this also has unearth uh, for one and a red, so you can actually get a second play out of it as well. Uh, pingers like this are notoriously good. Uh, it, there are a lot of ways you can really, really abuse this. At the very end of the day, you don't have to attack and you still get to deal a damage to the opponent every turn, which is great. So I actually really like this card. Uh, the fact that it's only in one color is nice as well, just because you're not committing uh, to a three color combination right off the bat. Uh, that is important in draft, uh, despite the fact that this is a three color set, generally speaking. Uh, you don't necessarily have to push that way right away. Maybe leave yourself open, that way you can jump into multiple strands if you need to. So, I actually like this card. I think it's the card that I'm going to pick so far, uh, but we'll certainly see what the rest of the pack holds. Uh, Wild Nakatl, a fantastic card as well, is a 1-1 one, one for 1 green. Uh, as long as you control a mountain, it gets plus one, plus one, and then the same thing for planes. So this can be a 3-3 three, three for one mana, which is pretty awesome. At worst, it's a 1-1 one, one for one green mana, which is not amazing, but it's fine. Uh, it is, you know, within its stat range and all that. I do actually really like this card as an aggressive uh, constructed pick. I don't think I like it so much here over the stinger. I think I'd rather have that just because, you know, at worst, the stinger can deal with a lot of these little picked off creatures at the beginning of the game, or it can just deal that damage to the opponent. This eventually will get outpowered, and that's the, the struggle with a card like this. Uh, Executioner's Capsule is one black for an artifact. You can pay one in a black, tap it, and sacrifice it. Destroy target non-black creature. Uh, honestly, a very strong card. It's a little bit tricky because it is a non-black creature, not just any creature, which means it's it's basically a more expensive Doomblade, by the way. But that does kind of leave you into a position where if you are against a lot of like a heavy black deck, this is kind of a useless card. Uh, that being said, I think it's worth it to take it over anything else. Maybe not the Stinger. I'm not 100% sure. I think what I do is put them together for now and see what the rest of the pack holds. But removal is very, very important and uh, definitely, definitely at a premium uh, in almost any set. So I'm super happy to take that here if that is the pick. Uh, we'll certainly see through the rest of the pack, though. Uh, our first uncommon, Bant Battle Mage, is a 2-2 two -two for two and a white. Uh, tap a green, tap it, target creature gains trample until the end of the turn. You can pay a blue and tap it, target creature gains flying until the end of the turn. Uh, honestly, a decent card. I don't think it's amazing, but it does break through combat very, very well. Uh, and I do think that that's worth noting. I think it's probably better than the Stinger. Um, ugh, that's a tough one. I think it definitely is. I think I would take it over either of these two cards uh, solely because this does break combats, uh, combat spells very, very well. Uh, ooh, sorry, guys, this is getting my uh, F stop here is a little low. I apologize. Uh, so this is a really strong card, though, for breaking through board stalls because you can give something trample or you can give it flying, hopefully make it unblockable. You can do a lot of really cool utility things with this. Not only that, but just to play the card, you don't need any of the other colors. You only need white. So yes, this is a three color card. However, just to play it out there, just to have the creature out, it only costs three mana and you only need white. So I'm actually kind of in for this. Uh, I do think it's a very, very strong pick. Uh, Jesse and Infiltrator uh, is a 2-2 two -two for one green and one blue, and it is unblockable. So a pretty straightforward card here, but an unblockable threat is always really, really nice. I don't know that I love it more than the Bant Battle Mage. Uh, I'll be honest. I don't know. I don't know how good this is uh, in the grand scheme of things because you can just remove it. Uh, and it is two damage per turn, which is worth noting, but it's not like game breaking. It's not like you're going to win the game right away off of it. So not 100% sure on this one. I think I'll keep them together for now. No, you know what? I think I'm going to go with the Bant Battle Mage. I think I like that better than the Infiltrator. That may be incorrect again. I, I did not draft during that time, but I do really, really like that Battle Mage. Uh, Don Ray Archer is a 1-1 one, one for two and a blue. It has Exalted. Uh, and you can pay a white, tap it, and it deals one damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Ooh, this is a very cool card. So I actually really, really like this. Uh, I don't know that it's that amazing because it is kind of a one-shot deal and you have to leave up the mana for it. The Exalted is very nice, but I think I like the Battle Mage better. Uh, both are pretty strong picks, but I do think the Battle Mage gives you a little bit more utility. Uh, doesn't necessarily... Well, it does in a certain way encourage that aggression. It doesn't power anything up necessarily, but it gives you the option to trample over or fly over, and I think that that's worth it. And our rare... 
Uh, Scourglass is three and two white for an artifact. Tap it and sacrifice it. Destroy all permanents except for artifacts and lands. Play this ability only during your upkeep. A sweeper is a very powerful thing. You should always respect the fact that there are sweepers in the game. I don't know if you should take it in limited. A lot of times they tend to equate out in limited a little bit more. Certainly you have the info to play around it more so than your opponent, which is nice. But in general, I don't think it's that great uh, because a lot of times you sweep your board and their board, which is fine, but you lost all of your stuff too and you're having to play a lot of creatures in limited. So I don't think I love it as much here. I don't think I would take it over the battle mage. We did not get a foil. So that just leaves the Bant Battle Mage. That may be an incorrect pick, guys, but please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Again, I did not draft during this time, so I don't know for sure, but I really enjoy this set. Hopefully you guys did too. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.